kids, whoever brings in the most cans of food um, and or anything, we're going to have a list of stuff that we need for our pantry and for our blessing mug. And for each item you bring outside of ramen noodle, okay, you can't bring one packet of ramen noodle. Now, you can bring like 12 cases of ramen noodle if you want to, but you'll get a ticket for each one. Uh, it'll be, you'll get a three ticket, or I'm sorry, you'll get two tickets for anything that you bring in that's over three dollars. Okay, so you'll get two tickets in that prize. Uh, and this will go on until July 1st. And uh, we just really need to get these shelves stocked up in our food pantry. Um, and that blessing box, it really does bless a lot of people. And it takes a lot to do that. So anyway, the, um, the kids will receive a $25 gift card for whoever brings in the most. Um, well, I don't think it's for the most. Whoever has the most tickets. So. Or we do the ticket draw. We're going to draw tickets. Okay, we're going to draw tickets. And then um, for the adults, the adults are also going to be doing that. We're going to have a honey basket made up. So it's going to be local honey and gift items in that basket. So we'll give you a little bit more on that later. And also, uh, we are um, going to be doing vacation Bible school. We're going to have like a 15 minute meeting after church. Anybody interested in helping with that? It's going to be on the 27th, 28th, and 29th. And I think we're going to talk a little bit more about times so that we can make sure that, you know, everybody can be uh, participate in that. And we do need volunteers. We need volunteers to help in the kitchen, and we need volunteers to help with crafts and games and uh, even teaching. So we need volunteers for that. Also, this Wednesday night, we're going to do Sloppy Joe's, so I'll have the list on the Facebook thing. We'll do Sloppy Joe's and the cake hot. Maybe um, a salad, fair. maybe in dessert. So. so, and I do have a praise report. Um, it does my heart good to see um, everybody grow in the Lord. I just love seeing growth in the church and the congregation, in myself and in the congregation. Um, not last Wednesday, but the Wednesday before, we were sitting at the table with Angelique and Jeff. And um, Jeff was pretty down about a situation, not having a job, and, and his van was all messed up. And little Miss Angelique, she just sat there and she just encouraged him so much. She said, now, now Jeff, this is going to work out. You'll see. You'll see what God's going to do. And it just really encouraged me that she was encouraging him like that in faith. And there was no doubt in her words. And there was no disappointment in her words she knew that god was going to come through for him yeah. and he did yeah, yeah. he finally got a dog and got his barn locked and he got his he got off the the backup kit and then he gave us we use them right now but nephew's gonna fix the uh red one mm -hmm. and the land we have down there his nephew take over the land mm -hmm. the, 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 the engine amen but yeah but so yeah that was what i was going to say she called me i believe it was i don't remember what day it was she called was, uh, she, uh Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. But she'll, need to she'll never call me with, with uh, but she'll call me if she needs prayer or whatever. But most of the time when Angelique calls me, it's to praise about something that God's done for her. So I just, I just, you guys get encouragement through that. But, you know, he, God's working. He's on the move. Amen. Pastor Gary. <laughs> Trying to blow our eardrums? So. Are we gonna let Pastor Rich win the, the honey basket? Nope. No. No. <laughs> no. Why not? <laughs> you won the last eight. I I think this time I'm gonna be the one that wins because I'm like a shot. <laughs> and those are really nice. Um, I saw the one. It's actually kept my my daughter in law my daughter in law's um, grandmother that. Uh, she has a, a bee business and they do honey. And we have actually had some of the honey. It's really, it's really good honey and some honey candy, some honey soap that she makes. It's an all handmade uh, basket that's from her. I don't know what you call it, a bee farm? I don't know what it is. <laughs> from her beehives, her, her honey business. So it's going to be really nice. And I, I believe. I will see. It's gonna be mine. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, um, and it's for a good cause. So the more cans of stuff you bring, the more chances you have to win. So, and then the kids, we thought it'd be the best thing because all kids like different things. 
um, to let them take the $25 and get what they want from Walmart. But like my granddaughter, Kaylee, when she saw one of those honey baskets because uh, her grandmother donated it for uh, a baseball raffle, she was like, she kept trying to get her mama to put money in, even though they were the ones that donated it to, um, to win it. But uh, Carol wouldn't let her. <laughs> and her grandmother actually made her a honey basket. It's really nice. And I just want you to, to know that it's really nice. And so be thinking about it. And please, I think part of it that she didn't, please don't bring out a date stuff. You know, <laughs> we need to be able to present it to our community. And when you present stuff to your community and to people, you want it to be something that, that's quality, something that you would want. You know, you wouldn't want a crushed box of crackers or um, an out of date recipe can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, end date, nothing bad. So praise God. Well, with them in the candle, they don't want to go out of date. I didn't hear what you said. I'm sorry. I was joking. <laughs> okay, so um, with the business, hey, maybe I didn't want to understand you. Maybe <laughs> y'all can tell me. <laughs> maybe, maybe my ears are just closed. Okay. So let's go on. There were a few years ago, and it's quite a few years ago now. I remember I went with my children to um, the Atlanta Zoo. And the only thing that I remember about that trip, because my kids are really young, the only thing that I remember about that trip was the flamingo enclosure. And right in the middle of that flamingo enclosure was a duck. And you know how flamingos stand on one leg? And that duck was standing in the middle of those flamingos on one leg. <laughs> that duck thought he was a flamingo. And I always thought that was one of the oddest things that I ever said to that duck standing in the middle of the flamingo, thinking that he was a flamingo. And you know that somebody had to have taken an egg and put it in there yeah. so that that duck would be born. <laughs> but that duck grew up seeing flamingos. And so what happened when he grew up? He acted like a flamingo. And he became what he saw. And we see that in our kids too. Um, when our kids are growing up, they see their parents. They see what their parents do. They see what's important to their parents. And, you know, and unfortunately, it can work in the positive and in the negative. A lot of kids, you know, there's something called a generational curse that's passed down from, you know, father to children or mother to children. And because somebody that's in an alcoholic family might see their dad being abusive, drinking, and stuff like that. And when they grow up, because they think, well, that's normal. That's what I should be. I should be, I should drink. You know, it's okay, you know, to hit your spouse. It's okay to hit your children, you know, because they saw that all their life. That's what's normal in their minds. Whereas, you know, you watch rich people and the rich people, rich people's children, they have a different expectation than somebody who was born in poverty. We see over and over people that are born into poverty think, well, that's just the way it is. I actually heard stuff like that out of my son one time because we were talking about being a doctor. He goes, well, I can't be a doctor. My son said that. <laughs> and he said, well, you know, like, well, what makes you think you can't be a doctor? And he says, well, I go to Ridgeland High School. Somebody that goes to Ridgeland High School can't be a doctor. I was like, why not? <laughs> you know, and he had all this, well, you know, this has never happened before. Blah, 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 blah. Why? Because he had let, let somebody train him how he should see himself and how he should think about what his opportunities are. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to read to you in Ephesians chapter 2. It says, even when we were dead in our wrongdoings, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace you've been saved and raised up with him and seated us with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come, he might show the boundless riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. So, you know, the Bible says that we were crucified with him. Jesus, we died with Jesus. That's what it means, we were crucified with him. But he didn't leave us in that crucified dead state. He raised us back to life. You know, you hear a lot of, in the world today 
about black and white, you know, male and female, rich and poor, blah, 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 all the things that, that can divide us. But when we were raised to Christ, we no longer look like we did before. We were, we've become a new creature, and we look like Jesus now. So, you know, me and Gina, we might not look exactly alike, but, you know, to the devil and to God, which is the most important thing, when he looks at us, he sees Jesus. Amen. You know, when we look at each other, we're supposed to see Jesus. You know, we're not supposed to see rich or poor, male or female, black or white. We're supposed to see Jesus. Amen. That's who we are supposed to identify with. Our identity isn't wrapped up in the circumstances that we came from. It's not wrapped up in, you know, who our parents were. Our identity should be wrapped up in who he is. Yeah. But, you know, when it says that we're raising, we're seated with him, do you know that's a place of authority? The right hand of the king. The right hand is a place of authority. We're a seated in a place of authority. You know, God has looks at us and he sees Jesus. When the devil looks at us, he should see Jesus, or he does see Jesus. You know, he lies to us a lot of times, but he should see Jesus. And we should use our authority Amen. over the enemy. And the only way that he can keep us from using our authority is to lie to us. And a lot of times, he has lied to us about who we are in Christ. That's why we'll see people, well, I'm just an alcoholic. That's what I've always been. That's all I always will be. But if we identify with who, you know, Jesus raised us up. He said, the old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The Bible says you're a new creation, a new creature in Christ Jesus. So instead of identifying with I'm an alcoholic, I'll always be an alcoholic. I'm a murderer, I'll always be a murderer. I'm a this, I'm a that, I'm a poverty, I'm a blah, 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 blah. We should identify with who he has made us to be. You know, God is our father now. Jesus is our elder brother. Our identity should not be wrapped up in who our parents were, although we, you know, we still love our parents. Our identity is wrapped up in who God has made us to be. He's raised us and seated us with him in a place of authority. And now the enemy is under our feet. And the plan of the enemy is and always has been for us not to know who we are in him. So he can continue to deceive us and therefore get the victory. But you know what? I believe that in this last time, we are a church that knows who we are. Not only are we going to know who we are, we're going to act like we know who we are. Yeah. We're going to stop acting like the alcoholic, the person that hates each other, the racist, you know, stuff like that. They just need to kick that out of the church. We just need to kick it out of the church because it's the world coming into the church trying to bring division. And that's the only way we can be defeated. A house divided against itself, what happens to it? It falls. But when the church gets into unity and realizes that we're all we all look like Jesus, there's no division among us. You know? We all look like Jesus and we take our place of authority over the things. That's why when we're talking about we're not Democrats and Republicans, we're the body of Christ. They don't dictate to us what's right and wrong. We tell them. And it's time we took our place of authority in the spirit, and commanded, and demanded, and took our place. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Good word. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to receive this morning's tithe and offerings, Lord. praise God. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. I mean, you're blessed this week. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We're going to give back to God what belongs to him. Um, Genesis, uh, Genesis uh, 3.22 says, While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest shall not cease. It means there's always going to be a seed time. There's always going to be a harvest time. There's a time to plant. And then there's a time to harvest it. Amen. And I believe that we're in this time of harvest time. We continue to always sow seed. Why? 
you always want to have seed in the ground. So you always want to have a harvest come up. So we always get seed in the ground. That's why he says, while the earth remains, now notice what he said, while the earth remains, there'll be seed time and harvest. Shall I say and, and so I've got this confession I make. Therefore, I sow my seed in faith, knowing that the law of seed time and harvest is working on my behalf. Amen. Genesis 1.11 says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth after his kind, and it was so. So when we sow our financial seed, we're going to reproduce, we're going to get back, amen, what we sow. If you sow, if you plant tomato plants, what you get? You plant a pear tree, you get an orange tree. No, you don't. You plant a pear tree, you get a pear tree. Amen. You put a partridge in there, you get a partridge in a pear tree. So, Papa Christmas. But you plant, you plant. No, it's never too early. 24 7. It's a hang around me, you'll see Christmas 24 7. Um, so, if we plant pear trees, we get pear. We plant an orange tree, we get an orange tree. We plant tomatoes, you plant lettuce, you get lettuce. Amen. So when we sow financially, man, guess what we're going to reap back? Our financial seed. It's a law. It's not something, oh, you just made it up. No, it's right here in the Word of God. It's a law of seed time and of harvest. Praise God. And then he says over in Job 36, 11, if you obey and serve him, they shall spend it. Now watch this. What did that say? If... Job 36, 11. If they obey. I've always said this. I'll say it again. If is a big word. It's just two little letters. But if is a huge word in the word of God. If they obey and serve him. Kind of sounds like if they're willing and obedient. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and watch this. And their years in pleasure. Glory to God. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich and adds no sorrow to it. You need to get that book we have downstairs. I've got some downstairs. I don't care if we got them back there or not. I know we've got a few downstairs. Amen. The blessing of the Lord, that's a free book. Praise God. It's for you. We sell that into you. Brother Copeland sent those to us to give out. And uh, you get that book. Praise God. I think they're all downstairs now, but I'm not sure. You talking about so this one? You got one, that one there, yeah. So get those, get that book, The Blessing of the Lord, my brother Copeland. Amen. And read that book, praise God. It will change your life forever. Amen. Why? It's the word of God. So it's going to change your life. So this morning, praise God, we're going to receive the tithe. The tithe belongs to the Lord. And uh, we're going to give that to the Lord this morning. Uh, what we sow after that, amen, praise God. Well, we, 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 we sat and we determined uh, what we're going to sow. Amen. Uh, we just sowed, uh, the church just sowed the other night while we were sitting here. Amen. We just sowed into Brother Moore's ministry. On, and what was that? What was that we sowed into? Yeah. That, uh, the ministry takes some supplies. Okay, yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's a ministry airplane that they take supplies over to Haiti. Praise God. So. Yeah, the one they had, somebody attacked the airplane and destroyed the planes. So they're getting a new one, praise God. And we're going to sow in that, and we're going to get we're going to get the word of God. We're going to get not only do they send food, but they send the word of God to Haiti, praise God, through that plane. So their last plane uh, got uh, attacked and uh, blew, and, and they, they bombed it, I guess, is what they did, too. Oh, they just tore it all to pieces. Okay, it was a mob. They just tore the plane all to pieces, so. Uh, amen. So we, we, we sowed into that, praise God. And uh, we're believing for a harvest on that. So, amen. amen. Father, we love you today. And I don't have to say anymore. We know what's yours. We know what belongs to you, God. And I just thank you right now. You amen. honor. you, Lord, as we honor you with our time, as we honor you with our offering today, we give it back to you. We thank you in the name of Jesus. We declare and decree, Lord, all of our bills are paid this month in Jesus' name. And Lord, we just thank you right now. We have more than enough. And Lord, we have more than enough for not only our bills, we have more than enough for benevolence. We give you praise for it, Lord. We honor you today, and we thank you for a harvest. You come back to us some 30, 60, 100 folks. 
We believe the Deuteronomy 111, Father, a thousand times return upon our giving. In Jesus' name today, amen, amen. and so be it. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. We can say this again, can we? Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Oh, he healed my body, he touched my mind, he saved me, Lord, it was just in time, oh, I'm going to praise his name, oh, he saved me just the same, I'm going to praise him, for what the Lord has done, amen, praise God, hallelujah, it feels weird singing through this thing right here, when I sing, I'm used to having a hand in hand. When I got this song, it makes me think like I'm Michael Jackson. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I used to moonwalk, but I ain't got the right shoes on. I can't moonwalk in this. So. Got to have some slippery soles. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So y'all watch that. That was a flesh moment. <laughs> Wipe that out of your mind. Praise God. Lord, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Grace. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Man, God is good. Also, I want to highly recommend to you. Um, here, honey, you want this microphone? Or you got that one? Okay, yeah, that one works. So you just have to turn it on. Um, again, let me highly recommend you getting this book, Amen, for Brother Copeland. Like I said, I'm going to look around. I may house some at the house. And um, Six Steps to Excellence in Ministry. And uh, this is some. This was required leaking for leadership at the home church. Amen. So all of us that was in leadership at the home church, this was required reading. Uh, but this six steps of ministry will help you in your daily walk in your Christian life today. Praise God. So um, if you can, if you get a chance to get this book, get this from Brother Copeland. You can go to kcm.org and order it. Uh, you can probably get them off Amazon for a dollar or two or three dollars probably. So please uh, get that. Read this. This is another book that will change your life. I, I'm declaring and decreeing, amen, that one day I won't be standing up here and going, you need to get my new book. <laughs> amen. Amen. Praise God that we wrote. Praise God. And uh, we've got a lot of stuff. i got a lot of stuff in this, and we, we need to write. I've actually been encouraged. To, uh, several people have encouraged me to write a book on my testimony. Amen. So just, just happy not got to it. And uh, why haven't you done it? Because even though people's asked me to do it, I haven't felt the leading of the Lord to do it. Yes. <laughs> it's simple. Right? When God tells me to do it, then I'll do it. Amen. I don't want to write a book just because somebody wants me to write a book. Praise God. So when the time's right, we will. Thank you, Jesus. All right. You got your Bibles. You got your word with you today. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. So we've been talking about passion. Now, I have to get through this today. Okay. Because we are in the month of May, I actually did not realize, I thought there was still one Sunday left in April, and did not realize that today was the first day of May, and uh, we're going to start on vision. So we're going to start on the vision next week, okay? So uh, if you've got people, amen, that's interested in, in, or they're looking for a church, now look, we're not here to steal people, I let people know this all the time when we meet them, if they've got a home church, they need to go to their own church, Amen. Wherever church they call home, that needs to be their church. Amen. And uh, but if you know people who are looking for a place, they're out looking, amen. Invite them to come here because we're going to start talking about the vision of the church. But this is the vision that God gave us back in 2001. Well, we didn't start the church in 2008. Praise God. So that kind of tells you how we had to wait upon the Lord. We didn't just jump into something concerning the church. And God had to step by step, God gave us the steps. To begin to start the church and uh and so we started out with what we call life groups as we grow here we're i'm believing that we're going to be able to start life groups uh here at church y'all may have been a part of one i don't know if they have them here or not uh, before in the past but a life group where we have a home uh you go to someone's home and uh, just like they told it in, in the book of acts uh it says they went from we got the we got the uh, uh we got the uh the scripture from the book of Acts where it says they went from house to house. Amen. And they were declaring the word of the Lord. 
And so uh, what it is, how you have that set up is, is you, one night of the week, you go to someone's house, and they have a Bible study, they cook food, have, have a, you know, fellowship and all that. And, um, and then, uh, you know, you just kind of study the word together. Uh, there's usually a, put about a two hour time limit on it, and everybody goes home. And you do that from different houses each week. So uh, we'll look at the start. And that's actually one way you grow your church is you invite people in the neighborhood uh, to come over. So it's not church members, but how churches uh, grow through that is through through small groups like that. And um, as God uh, leads us in that direction, amen, we know that's part of our vision that God gave us. As we get in that direction, and we'll talk about that next week, uh, a lot of things that God's given us, the vision of the church. So, uh Come with your ears on next week, praise God. Bring you some pencil and pads. I hope you do that every week. Uh, and, and write down, amen, what you're hearing. The Bible says, uh, write the vision down, make it plain that those who read it may run with it. And that word read there also means that hear it. So uh, as you hear that, as you read it, amen, you'll run with the vision and want to be a part of the vision that God has here at River of Life Church. Praise God. So we're talking about passion and the reason I'm going to go through this like I am today is because I want to finish this. I've got to finish it. So I'm going to give you my, I'm going to read my notes. Amen. I'm going to try to stay on my notes, not get off my notes here. Praise God. Um, go with me to Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. Now we know how we lose, one of the ways we lose our passion, of course, over the book of Revelation tells us that you have lost your first love. In other words, we have, we were on fire for God. Amen. We were, uh, you know, I've known people over the past. Carrie and I have known people over the past who were in ministry, who were on fire in the ministry, and they're no longer in ministry now. Some aren't even going to church anymore. People that we knew. We knew people who were pastors that aren't even pastoring anymore. They're out going to nightclubs and being in nightclubs and things like that now. And they were pastors at one point. And what happened was they got discouraged. Uh, they, 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 they got, uh, uh, you know, talked about, gossiped about, <laughs> all that stuff. And, uh, you know, rather than overcome it, they let it overtake them. And uh, you've got to learn, and you've got to learn the thing. That, in, in God, you've got to learn how to overcome things. Just because somebody talks about you, you know, so what? Amen. I've always said this. If you're going to talk about me, amen, talk about me before the Lord, not to somebody else. Praise God. Hallelujah. If we would do that, we'd help see a lot of change in people's lives. If we pray for them and not about them. Amen. So we pray for you here, glory to God. Carrie and I, Carl and Gina, we pray for you here, not about you. We don't talk about you. Man. We don't talk about people, glory to God. And so some people aren't used to that. Some people have been in churches where that's all they've seen all their life, and they don't know how to handle it. You're actually praying for me and not against me. <laughs> yeah, there's churches out there. People's came out of it like this. They've been hurt. They've been discouraged. Amen. And that's one of the things that God spoke to us about when we came to this city, that uh, he was going to put trust back in the people. He was going to be able to trust again. Amen. So if you're one of those people today, praise God, that, 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 that was like that. Amen. Uh, we believe you're going to get, you're going to be healed of that, praise God. You're all going to overcome that in Jesus' name. So why do we need our passion restored? Why do we need our passion restored? Well, first of all, passion is the first step to achievement. Watch this in Matthew chapter 11. Now watch, and I'll read this again later on. Matthew 11, 12. Matthew 11, 12 says this. It says, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffer violence, and the violent take it by force. Kerry uses this scripture a lot, too. That Greek word there for violent in this context literally means to be energetic, or those who strive to obtain its privileges with the utmost eagerness and effort. Let me read that to you again. The Greek word for violent in this context means to be energetic, or those who strive to obtain its privileges with the utmost eagerness and effort. All of us have an inherent desire to succeed at whatever it is that we're doing. Our relationship with God, our ministries, our jobs, our marriages, our family. Our desire will determine 
our destinies. Our desire will determine our, that you ain't got no desire, you're not going to move forward very much. If you ain't got no desire to do it. If you ain't got no desire to be promoted, you'll never get promoted. If, if you never have a desire, it, 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 like, like in, in some churches, some churches don't have a desire to move forward. They have a my four and, and how's it go? My four no more mentality. Reach out to the community. We don't want to do that. We like our little clique we got going on here. Well, there is no cliques in the kingdom of God. God does not have a clique in his kingdom. Amen. Man makes cliques. People make cliques. There is no clique in the kingdom of God. We're all one. Amen. And God has a plan. And for, uh, people, I, I really, uh, people who, when I talk to them or I'm by the church, they'll ask what side of the church we are. I'm like a word growing church. I got, uh, I didn't get rebuked, but I got corrected by Tracy Harris one night at the home church. And uh, he, he was asking where our church was. And, uh, and if you know Tracy, Tracy moves in the gifts of the spirit. Oh my goodness. Tracy moves in the gifts of the spirit, just like Dr. Hagen. And uh, so he was asking us one night, well, he laid hands on me one night. Really, he didn't even lay hands on me, did he? Just the power of God hit me. This is one of my flopping in the, flopping like a fish stories. Amen. And uh, he, I think he just pointed at me or something. The power of God hit me, knocked me out of my seat. Man, I was I was on the floor before you knew it. And the power of God was all over me. And uh, and so I, uh, uh, Tracy said, you know, where's your church? I said, you know, George, I said, now we're a small church. He said, hold on. Don't you ever say that again. Is that what you want? Remember we talked to you a long time ago or we did teach you here, didn't we? That at the end of uh, everything you say, if you, if you, like you're saying, I'm sick. Oh, man, I feel so bad. At the end of that statement, put and that's the way I want it. This will help you change your language. <laughs> this will help you change your confession of faith. Amen. You said, they go, man, I'm just, a, I'm so down and out. We'll just add to that. And that's the way I want it. Because that's what you're going to get. Whatever you said, you're going to get. Many people, what they have today is what they planted yesterday with their mouth. Well, I ain't, have, I ain't got nothing. I ain't never going to have nothing. Nothing ever works out for me. We'll never get nothing. And that's the way I want it. That ain't how you want it, is it? No. So we have to change our mouth. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And I done got off my message already going into something. <laughs> Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And the Bible says, whatever you say, that's the fruit you're going to get, and that's what you'll eat. So do I want life coming out of my mouth, or do I want death coming out of my mouth? Because that's what I'm going to get. So, praise God. Get that mouth lined up with the Word of God today. He says, from the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffer violence, and the violent take it by force. So our desire will determine our destiny. The starting point of all achievement is desire. Keeping, keeping it constantly in mind. Now watch this. Weak desires bring, res, bring weak results. Just as a small amount of fire makes a small amount of heat. If you find yourself lacking in persistence, this weakness may be a remedy by building a stronger fire under your desires. A person who is excited about what they're doing, they can sell you just about anything. A person who is, I, you know, I, uh, I tried sales one time, and I am not a salesman. And I, uh, not only was I working at a radio station, I was also trying to uh, sell for the real, like sell advertisement. Man, I, I could not be a salesman. And I'd walk in, I'd try to tell me, you know, what we had was trying to sell commercials, you know, and uh, for advertising. And I just could not do it. And they just say, no, not interested. I go, okay, thank you. I just get up and leave. Well, persistent people aren't like that. You ever had those vacuum people come in your house? Them guys, once they walk in your door, they will not leave until you try to buy, until, until they try to get you to buy the bank. And they will keep on and keep on and keep on. Amen. I think my mom's bought every vacuum cleaner that's ever came to her house. 
But they will, they will, they will be persistent, man, in their sales. Somebody who's good at what they're a car salesman. What happens when you go to buy a car? You go, oh, we're just going in here to look. And most people that go in, a lot of people who go in just to look, and not everybody, but a lot of people who go in to look end up walking out with a car. Because <laughs> they're going to find a deal for you somehow. And uh, you know the tricks, amen. No, that's just too much. <clears throat> well, sit right here. Let me go talk to my man. There ain't no more talking to a man. Man, they're going in there and looking at them, combing their hair in the mirror, and then come back and go, well, I'm not talking to my man. And he said, they already got a plan in place, man. We know car sales. Hallelujah. Watch this. A proven motivator will make it to the top before a proven genius. Y'all hear that? A proven motivator will make it to the top before a proven genius. When Andrew Carnegie hired Charles, I thought it was the next story. When Andrew Carnegie hired Charles Schwab to administer his uh, far flung steel empire, Schwab, watch this. Swab became the first man in history to earn a million dollars a year while in someone else's employ. He became the first man in history to be employed by somebody else and make a million dollars. Swab was once asked what equipped him to earn three million dollars a day. Was it his knowledge of steel manufacturing? Nonsense, snorted Swab. I have lots of men working for me who know more about steel than I do. Swab was paid such a handsome amount largely because of his ability, his ability to inspire people. I consider my ability to arouse enthusiasm among the men the greatest asset that I possessed, he said. Anyone who can do that can go almost anywhere and name almost any price. You can look at the examples in the Word of God. So let's go to the Word of God. We looked at a natural example. Let's go to the Word of God and look at an example. Let's look at, at, at let's look at Jesus and let's look at the Apostle Paul. Okay. So let's look at the example of Jesus first. John two seventeen. John two seventeen says this. His disciples remembered. Now watch this. What did his what what was it? His disciples. What did it say? His disciples remembered that it is written, "Zeal for your house has eaten me up." Zeal for your house has eaten me up. One of the things Jesus possessed, praise God, was zeal. He had zeal. There's a song out there taken from the Old Testament. It's called The Zeal of God. It used to be one of our favorite songs we did the home church. The zeal of God has consumed me deep in my soul. Praise God. A raging fire that keeps burning. It's a fire that cannot be quenched. Glory to God. You ever heard that song? The zeal of God has come to me deep in my soul. A raging fire that keeps burning. It's a fire that cannot be quenched. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, the Jewish song. Praise God. <laughs> but it's the zeal of God. We need the zeal. People's got zeal, man. I'll tell you what, they can't be stopped. Somebody who's got zeal. Jesus had zeal in John 4 34. He said, Jesus said, My food, watch this. Jesus said, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish. His work. So Jesus had this seal. Jesus had this passion within him, praise God, to do the work of the Father. What the Father had sent him to do, he said in within himself, I'm going to finish the work of my Father. Amen. Carrie and I have this zeal within us to finish the work here in Lafayette, Georgia. That God has called us to do. And when that work is finished, amen, well, then we'll go lay on the beach somewhere. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I believe when this work is finished here, amen, it's going to be time to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Glory to God. Amen. I believe we're part of that outpouring. We're a part of that awakening that God has for this city. Hallelujah. And so this zeal is in That's why we won't quit. We have had ever, I don't know who, who were we were talking I don't know who we were talking to. We were talking to some people. They, we told them, we've had every opportunity to quit. 
We've been given the opportunity to quit on a silver platter. <laughs> Just quit. Just give it. Well, it ain't worth it. Amen? You know, word gets back to us. People are talking about us behind our back and all this stuff. They're having, you know, uh, they're having a southern fried pastor for dinner. You know? So they're, they're chopping us up. We can let that get to us. But you know what? We're not the ones being hurt. The ones talking about us behind our back, they're the ones being hurt. They're the ones that's sowing that seed. You know what? And you know, I learned this a long time ago. Even if I don't like the, even if I don't like the, guess what? There's some people, out, there's some pastors out there. There's some evangelists out there I don't particularly like. I've learned this. Keep my mouth off of them. Even though I may not like them and I may not agree with them, I've learned to keep my mouth off of them. Why? The word of God declares, touch not or say anything against my anointing. Why? A curse comes upon you when you talk about God's people. A curse comes upon you when you talk about God's servants. And I've learned to keep that, uh, not me, that ain't come to my house. We, <laughs> me and uh, me and the uh, pastor Crider's son, uh, Sean, we were watching this video one day, and somebody had put a video together. This is years ago, years ago. Somebody had put a video together of a certain pastor, and they put these little sound effects on it and all that. And uh, you know, it's just it, I know what they were doing. They were doing it to make fun of the pastor. But we just happened to watch it. We were giggling. We thought it was kind of funny. Some things that were on there. There were some funny spots, but still that was a man of God. Whether we agreed with him or not, whether we agreed with his ways or how he did things, he was still God's servant. Amen? Whether we liked him or not, personally. And we left it. I remember, I remember uh, Pastor walked in, Pastor Allen walked in one day, and um, and uh, she was like, look at this, look at this dad. And so he said, I don't think it's funny at all. <clears throat> See you later, Sean. Bye, buddy. Please. No, I was in there on it too. He said, You two need to repent right now. You'll shut that off and you two repent over there. Yes, sir. So we shut the video off. We repented. Amen. You know, and, it, and uh, I think it might have even been Carrie. You know? He says, You know, what if that had been somebody making fun of Pastor Allen? What if that had been your pastor they were making fun of? Well, if it had been your pastor that put the sound effects to it, all this making fun of it, how would that make you? Yeah, what if it was me that they were making fun of? You would I wouldn't like it, would I? Yeah. And so you do unto others <laughs> as you would want others to do unto you. That scripture sticks right there, don't it? But Jesus said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Praise God. And uh, that's what I say this morning. <laughs> My food is to do him that sent me and to finish his work and to finish this message. <laughs> Isaiah 59, 17 says, for he put on righteousness as a breastplate. Now don't this verse sound kind of familiar right here? Watch this. Isaiah 59, 17. He put on righteousness as a breastplate a helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garment of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. And this was talking about, this was referencing Jesus, uh, the coming of the, of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, amen. This is who was referencing uh, the prophet Isaiah was prophesying about Jesus coming, amen. That Jesus, Jesus came, coming in to be the Messiah. For he put on the righteousness of the breastplate. Well, don't that verse sound familiar to you? Don't that sound like? Where's that at? Galatians? Yeah. Ephesians? Ephesians? No, it's a beast. Don't that sound like God's telling us to put on a, what's our weapons of our warfare? The helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, our feet are shod with the gospel of truth. Amen. Or no, our, our belt of truth, our feet are shod with the gospel of peace. I'll get it right. Man, it kind of sounds like the same thing, don't it? Why is that? Jesus now lives inside us. Praise God. So this is the armor that Jesus has on. Well, oh, this is the armor we got on and that he wants us to have on today. Same armor. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
That's Jesus' example. Now, Apostle Paul's an excellent example of one that was driven by passion. Look at it. Watch this. Look at all the opposition and persecution he faced yet in the middle of it all. He achieved great things. In those places where he was mobbed, stoned, jailed, persecuted, he planted great churches. Glory to God. Watch this. Philippians 3.14 says, I press toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And that's what each and every one of us, that should be our prayer today, that we press what? That we press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Colossians 1, 29 says, To this end I also labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. One place, or one place in, 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 uh, in, in the New Testament where Paul tried to build a church and couldn't build one, watch this. One place where Paul failed to build a church was in Athens. There was no persecution or opposition. Only indifference was a lack of passion towards anything. Even Paul himself couldn't build a church in the midst of apathy and indifference. Go back and read that story. Where people didn't want anything to do with it. People didn't want to do nothing. People didn't want to help. People, and we got we got people sitting in churches today that are like that. And I'm just sitting here. I'm going to sit on the seat. I don't want to do nothing. I won't be asked to do nothing. That was a commercial that used to burn me every time I heard it. It was being played on a Christian radio, and it was a it was a church would come on, and the pastor would say, "When you come to our church, you won't be asked to do anything." I'm like, "Well, then, what do you got a church for? No commitment." You won't be asked to do anything. We won't bother you at all. Just make sure you're free of money. <laughs> I'm like, I bet he was asking about that. But we won't ask you to do anything. Well, God's asking you, and God's laid out in his word what the works of helps are in the body of Christ and in the church today. Amen. Amen. And each and every one of us has got a job to do with you. Someone had a, a, I call her my little sister, but it's, it's Sean's wife, Holly. And uh, uh, she put a little thing in the uh, on her Facebook page one day. She said, Rick Chuck, this reminded me of you. And it was, uh, it was a person that was getting a tattoo. And um, it was uh, it was talking about, uh, I'm a servant, of, uh, I'm a servant of the most high. And this is what I do, or I, this is what I love to do, or something like that. And what it was was a tattoo of these chairs like this, all the chairs were stacked up on each other going up the arm. <laughs> and yeah, I said, my first my first uh, uh, role in ministry, amen, was taking care of chairs, and stacking chairs, and straightening chairs in the sanctuary. Amen? Vacuum in the sanctuary. And that's what I did for many years. Well, I was on staff there at the church, praise God. Or was it every Saturday night? I think we did. Sometimes we do Friday night. Every Saturday night we would go in. Praise God. Straighten those chairs. Make sure the sanctuary was clean. Glory to God. Why? For the house of the Lord. Amen. Why? The king was going to be there. Praise God. And I wanted the house clean. That's why it's important. Amen. We have a clean house. Praise God. Hallelujah. Don't be throwing trash everywhere. Nail clippings. Dirt. All that. Watch what you're doing. Amen. This is the house of God. This is his house. Praise God. This is the house where the king dwells here. Amen. This is his house. And it's your house. We're to take care of it, praise God. Passion increases with power. The key to willpower is want power. <laughs> People who want something badly enough can usually find the willpower to achieve it. Amen. When you get sick and tired of being, well, when I got born again, what well, happened? You've heard my testimony. What is it? What I, what I always say? I had to come to a place in my life where I got what? Sick and tired of being sick and tired all the time. I got sick and tired of my lifestyle. I got sick and tired of what was happening to me. I got sick and tired of dying. I got sick and tired of the overdoses. Glory to God. I got sick and tired of the, of, of the, of the I don't know, the whole, my whole life. I got sick and tired of it. I didn't want to live like that no more. I didn't want to be that way no more. Praise God. 
And to this day, hallelujah, guess what? I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen. All things have passed away. Behold, all things are brand new again. I'm not a drug addict. I'm not an alcoholic. And you'll hear people still wear that tag that's been delivered from drugs. They're not going to say, well, I'm an alcoholic. No, you're not. If you've been born again, you've been set free by the power of God, you're no longer an alcoholic. Yeah. That old man has passed away. Society may try to put that on you. But God's word says, you're a new creation in Christ Jesus today. Praise God. Old things have passed away, and I mean old, all things are brand spanking new. You know, Paul did this, and, and uh, I, was, I should have had the scripture ready, but I didn't know I was going this way. <laughs> but uh, Paul walked up, and, and uh, Paul said they were naming these things about what Paul had done. Remember, Paul done a lot of bad things. Well, they were trying to bring Paul's past back up to him. The people were, and Paul said, I don't know who that man is. That ain't me. Never heard of it. I'm paraphrasing. Paul said, uh, that ain't who I am. I don't even know what you're talking about. What happened? Paul, amen, saw on the other side of the blood of Jesus. He understood the scripture that all things are brand new in my life now. The old Paul don't exist anymore. The old you, the old rich does not exist anymore. The old Father and John don't exist anymore, praise God. Yeah. Say your name right now. Everybody say your name. Morning. You born again, your old past does not exist anymore. When you stand before the Lord, he sees you through the blood of Jesus. He does not see your past. When we stand before the Lord, praise did you find the scripture? It says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That's still not the same scripture. Though. That's a good one, though. Praise God. No, the people are actually talking to Paul. Paul, Paul literally tells them, I didn't do that. That ain't me. I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> praise God. So, praise God. But passion will increase over power. People who want something badly enough, they can easily find the willpower to achieve it. Glory to God. I'm going to close with this one here. Glory to God. Passion changes life. Passion makes, watch this, passion makes impossibilities possible. I got a ton of stuff here. What I'm going to get to. Passion makes impossibilities possible. I know what I'll do. I'll make this into a podcast. I'll go back to teach on all this. Passion makes impossibilities possible. Man is so made that whenever anything fires his soul, impossibilities vanish. Passion allows you to see beyond the difficulties and to lay hold of the faith that's needed for impossibilities. Philippians 4.13, we know that famous verse. Amen. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me today. You can't do it on your own. But through Christ, nothing. Everybody say nothing. Yeah. Nothing is impossible to you. Praise God. Amen. Nothing is impossible to you. If it's through what? What does it say? Through Christ. I can do all things what? Through Christ, which strengthens me. That's you want to know where you're strength. How you gonna do it? How you gonna make it? Through Christ. And he will give you the strength, amen, to be able to do it. He will give you the passion, Lord of God, to be able to do it. He'll give you the will to overcome the things that you're facing in life today. Lord of God, practical steps for rediscovering your passion. Believe that passion is the deciding difference. Believe that passion is the deciding difference. Realize that God desires passionate believers. We've got to understand that being favorite and passionate is actually a command. It is God's will and desire towards us. Matthew 22, 37. Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Praise God. So it's a command from the Lord. That we be passionate. 
You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. Praise God. And then you can pray for passion. Amen. If you've lost your passion, begin to pray for passion. I promise you, Matthew 7, 7, 8 says, ask, it'll be given to you. Seek, you'll find. Knock, it'll be opened to you. Everyone that asks, what it say? Everyone that what? Come on, we're not in kindergarten. <laughs> Everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it's open, praise God. And who did say can do this? Anybody. Whosoever will, praise God. Matthew 7, 11. If you then, now he's talking about the Holy Ghost here, but you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Glory to God. Amen. He didn't say he's going to give you bad things. He said good things. Good things. What would you think of that's good today? Praise God. Hallelujah. That lines up with his word. Glory to God. Then you got to activate spirit, your spiritual gift. 1 Timothy 4, 14 through 15 says, Do not neglect the gift that's within you, which was given to you by prophecy, with the laying on of hands of the presbytery. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely. There it is, that word. Give yourself entirely. Not half, not a portion of it. But he said, give yourself entirely, praise God, to them. That your progress may be evident to all. Live in, watch this, I love this part. Live in an environment where goals can be seen and achieved. Live in an environment where goals can be seen and achieved. Watch this. Wealth, technology, health, material, that's in the material world. Cognitive environment, knowledge, information, education. Intellect, that's the intellectual world. Social environment, family, friends, neighbors, church, the societal world. Emotional environment, feelings, attitudes. Spiritual environment, the internal and transcendent of God. So you want to live in a place, you want to live in an environment where you're seeing goals be accomplished, praise God. I don't, I don't want to, I didn't want to work for a company. I don't know about you. I don't want to work for a company that's falling apart. Do you? I want to work for a company, amen, that's doing something, amen, a company that's growing. It takes time to grow. I can put, even though it may look like a company grows overnight, that company didn't grow overnight. It took some time. It took some blood. It took some sweat. It took some tears. It took some hearing from the Lord, praise God. A church doesn't just grow overnight. It took planning. It took prayer, praise God. River life doesn't just grow overnight. Amen. It takes planning. It takes prayer. It takes passion, glory to God, for this church to grow. Amen. And that's some of the things Karen and I learned over these years. Amen. That just didn't happen overnight. You know, when God showed us, I was praying this morning, and I said, thank you for the, God over these years have showed us pieces of the puzzle. Thank God he didn't show us the whole picture. He didn't show us what we was going to have to go through. And if he had done that, it would have been no baby. <laughs> uh -uh. We said no. But it took prayer. Amen. It, took, it took determination. It took willingness. Amen. It took passion, Lord to God, and for us to keep on going. A don't give up, don't give out, don't quit attitude. Amen. No matter what's thrown our way. Because the enemy's going to give you every opportunity to quit. He's going to make sure he lays stumbling blocks out in front of you. To give it, that's, that's, that's in church, that's in ministry, that's in business. He's going to do everything and try to get you to shut up. Oh, it ain't working. Amen. Well, who determines the time it's supposed to work? And we learned this, amen. We are on God's timetable, amen. And it is working. How's that song go again? 
Even when I don't see it, he's working. Even if I don't feel it, he's working. And guess what? There's been times when we didn't see him working. Even but He was working. And then guess what? Because we didn't give up, didn't give out, didn't quit. Amen. Then we see what he was doing. And there's a lot of times it just looked like we're thinking to ourselves, what is going on here? Why is why does it look like this? Why is it happening like this? And then lo and behold, God shows you the picture. And then you go, oh, eh, I understand. Keith, Brother Keith Moore says this, praise God. When we get to heaven, I believe when we get to heaven, uh, we're going to look around and we're going to go, oh, that's why. That's why that happened. That's why it happened that way. Now I understand. Praise God. And guess what? He'll show you those things down here on earth now. Praise God. Amen. Why it happens. But you can't give up. You can't quit. Amen. Amen. You got to have a don't quit attitude. Glory to God. A don't quit attitude. I look at all the people, amen, and that, that's been, uh, 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 and I'm talking, when I talk Disney, I'm talking about Walt Disney, the man, not the garbage that's out there right now. I'm talking about Walt Disney. If Walt Disney will see what was happening right now, he'd be flipping over in his grave right now. Mm -hmm. But Walt Disney could have given up and quit, went bankrupt. Who was it? Ford, or was it, uh, uh, who was it? Bankrupt over, maybe it's Colonel Sanders, bankrupt over seven times. I think it might be Colonel Sanders. Bankrupt seven times. Well, don't you think, man, you'd want to give up and quit? <laughs> he didn't just, he just didn't, he just didn't, he just didn't lose stuff. He bankrupt seven times. But he had this fire in him. He ain't going to give up and he ain't going to quit. I'm going to see this thing succeed. I know I've got something from God. And if God told you to do it, amen, you stick with it. Praise God. God's given you a work to do. You stick with it. And don't give up and don't give out and don't quit. Praise God. One of the things that I uh, uh, think it was for said that uh one of the first things he started doing was tithing to God, started tithing to God in his business. And then he's, one day God asked him, uh, who was, no, it was, uh, was it, no, it was Pastor Mark, Pastor Mark Hankin, one of his friends who was a billion, not a millionaire, but a billionaire in business. I think I know who he's talking about. He's a billionaire in business. Said he was praying one day and going, uh, uh, Lord, you know, we need this, blah, blah, you know, help me with this. And we, uh, how did go? How the story go? I think you're confusing the stories. Okay, I'm confusing the stories. Well, here's the one that corrects me when I when I miss my story. So, um, I think the one that you're talking about. Now you go. There was this pastor that. Um, what are you doing? Can you say it? Yeah, go ahead. All right. So there was this pastor that. Um, he needed money for his church. So he goes in there and uh, he's like, oh God, you know, I need this money. Oh God, give me this three million dollars. Oh God. And God interrupted and said, how would you act if you, if you knew that if you already had it? He goes, oh, I would be so happy. I'd be crazy with you. And so he goes back, to, oh God, help me. Oh God, I need this money. Oh God, help me. And you know, God interrupted him again and said, how would you act if you already had it? Oh, he goes, oh, I already told you, I'll be happy, I'll be praising you. And he goes back to, oh, God, <laughs> help me. <laughs> oh, God, I need this money. Well, by such and such day, oh, God, help me. And then he interrupted him again. How would you act if you already had it? And all of a sudden, you know, the light bulb goes on. He already had it. <laughs> it was already his. And he started praising God, and sure enough. When he came. When he came to him. Amen. But the other story that you're talking about is a billionaire. Yeah. Then it's that billionaire. Yeah. <laughs> Not yeah, okay. But um he has a sign on his desk that says you have five minutes to be enthusiastic. No, ten seconds. Or ten seconds? Yeah. You have ten seconds to be enthusiastic when you come into my office. Or get out. Knows <laughs> if you don't care, if you're not enthusiastic, you don't really have anything to do with you. 
Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So he said, he said, what of God? He goes, he goes, I think God probably has that on his <laughs> God had a desk. God probably got thought he goes, you got 10 seconds to get be enthusiastic. Praise God. Well, you have to tell the kind of story. That's not the best thing. Well, another thing, we'll do that one. I'm getting ready to close here. Praise God. You tell the Kyle story, you're the one that's reading the book. We're we're listening to the message. We're listening to the message. We got the message on CD and then we got the book. Praise God. But anyhow, close it. Characteristics of a person driven by passion. Watch this. A person that's driven by passion is goal-oriented and a visionary. See, these are things I could stay on all day. Is self is a self-starter. Has a positive attitude. Gives 100% all the time. Strives for excellence. Isn't satisfied with mediocrity. Is creative at getting things done. Is creative at getting things done well, no matter what. Has a whatever it takes attitude. And isn't overcome by obstacles. Amen. These are things, these are, these are things that's going on in, in, in Carrie and I's life. Praise God. Concerning starting the church has a whatever it takes attitude and isn't overcome by obstacles, accepts responsibility and doesn't make excuses or shifts the blame, inspires others to do their best and rises to leadership. Glory to God. Rises to leadership. Those are the characteristics of someone with passion. Get to that place in your life where you have this in your life. Amen. I've had to apply this to my life. Glory to God. Now, I've had characteristics like that in my life, but not all of them. And uh, I'm still growing in some areas. Praise God. Not, not having arrived yet. But I promise you this I've got, amen. I have got to the place, amen, where a lot of these are active in my life today. Praise God. I don't give up and quit attitude. So apply these to your life today. Amen. Get that passion back. The Bible tells me just read it over in 1 Timothy. Stir up the gift that's within you. Stir up the gift that's within you. You have, notice what it said. You stir up the gift that's within you. I know we've used this before. You have to do it. I can't do it for you. Another pastor can do it for you. People can't do it for you. You have to be the one. You're the one that has to activate it. Amen? Faith, amen, is activated. You have to activate your faith. Today. And without faith, it's impossible. Everybody say impossible. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. You have to have faith. And what's not of faith is what? Sin. What's not a faith is sin. So, man, I'm going to make sure I'm applying faith to everything I'm doing. How I'm walking, how I'm talking, how I do my, how I, how I live my life, how I do my business. It's going to be by faith today. Praise God. It's all by faith. Amen. How? Faith in God. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm having trouble at work. How faith in God. Well, I'm having trouble in my marriage. How faith in God. I'm having trouble in my business. How faith in God. Yeah. I'm having I'm having financial problems. How faith in God. Yeah. That's the word. <laughs> That's the word. How faith in God. No matter what the circumstance, no matter what the situation is today, how faith in God. He will get you through. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Well, Lord, we love you. And we thank you for the word today. We just worship you, and honor you, and bless you. And we just thank you, Father God, that you are uh, today. You are helping us as we stir up this gift within us. We thank you today, Lord. Father, you're helping us. With your help, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us today. 
And I thank you, Lord, for creative ideas. This is what you need to be praying. If you're lacking in, if you're lacking in things, you're lacking in areas, praise God. Pray for and apply creative ideas and witty inventions. He will give them to you. That's what we're praying over this church. Lord, how is, it, how is it that you want us to reach this community? How is it you want us to reach this city? I don't want to do what somebody else has done. Amen? Because you ain't directed us in that direction to do it. So we know that God has the plan. He has the creative ideas and the witty inventions, amen, to get it done. Hallelujah. That, that's in any area of your life. That's, that's in your spiritual walk. That's on your job, in your business. Lord, thank you for creative ideas and witty inventions. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm moved by what I believe. Amen. What do you believe today? Because that's what you're moved by. Well, I'm moved by the word of God. This is the final authority in my life today. This should be the final authority in your life today. The B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. So, Lord, we love you today. We praise you. We honor you. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So be it. Praise God. Okay, anybody that's interested in the Vacation Bible School, um, I'll be down the Go ahead and we'll meet back here at the back. Oh, you're going to meet back here? We're just meet here in the back of the, the sanctuary in just a few minutes. And for those that are just interested in the Coyote story, I'm going to tell it real quick while everybody's moving to the back because it's hilarious. Um, Mark Pankins uh, likes to hunt. And so he goes coyote hunting with his friend. So they're in the bushes. And he goes, well, how do you get these coyotes to come in? And his friend says, well, you play a wounded rabbit sound. So they're sitting here in the bushes trying to call coyotes. And apparently a wounded rabbit sounds something like, rrr, 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 something like that. And he says, and God showed him that as the body of Christ, when we're murmuring and complaining, we're like the wounded rabbit that's making that rrr, 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 sound. And it calls the devil to come and to mess with our lives when we're murmuring and complaining. And I just can't imagine... Or I imagine all of us, you know, when we're <laughs> griping and complaining, what we really sound like is that. <laughs> I thought it's hilarious. <laughs> That's probably not what the rabbit actually sounds like. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.